have the ability to jump on later. Um, this is our second session. We had one last week, so if you didn't have a chance to preview it, we did actually put it in the um, the forums, so you can view the YouTube. Uh, we also attached the application. I had a lot of people calling it or emailing me saying, I, I don't have the application. It's, it is right there um, in our forms, but I'd be happy to directly send it to you. Um, and I'm gonna turn the program over to um, Kim Greer, who is our project manager on this. Um, and um, Kim, also, I had a request um, to have the PowerPoint and I didn't get those. Is he? So we will um, we'll share those and, and throw them in the, thor the forms yep. also. Okay. My apologies, yep, we will put those no, I, I totally missed it, sorry, my bad. All right, thank you, Kim. Do you want me to get everyone to introduce themselves? That would be great. Cool, uh, great. Well, I'm Kim Greer. I am the former <clears throat> board president for VTVN, but I stepped down to help manage this grant. So if we could, there's a, a smaller number of folks on this call than last week. So let's go around and have people introduce themselves. I will call on the people in order on my screen. So Bruce is the first person to say hello. Hi, Bruce Cunningham, aging in place, the woodlands. And where is that? It's just north of Houston. Great. Uh, Kathy Sayer. Yes. You're muted. You're muted, hang on. I think I can unmute you. Hang on. Where did you go? <laughs> Okay, well, we're going to just skip past Kathy for a moment and move on to Casey French. Hi, I'm Casey French. I'm uh, president uh, and founder of the York County Village, Village Association in York, Pennsylvania. Great. And then Karen Northcutt. Good morning, Karen Northcutt from Lake Isabella, California. Uh, I'm the secretary treasurer of our up and coming village. And I was on a week or so ago, but I wanted to make sure I didn't miss anything. So she's back. Welcome back. <laughs> okay. Oh, I see Kathy is unmuted now. Right. Apparently I wasn't unmuted. I I'm um, Kathy Sayre. I'm the co-founder of West Rockville Connects in Rockville, Maryland, which is just outside of Portsmouth in DC. Thank you. Uh, Jacqueline Zimmer-Jones. Hi folks, Jacqueline Zimmer-Jones. I'm with Next Village San Francisco. Uh, sorry, I just saw a hummingbird outside the window. Um, uh, Bobby Martinez. Hi, Bobby Martinez. I'm with Union County Neighbor to Neighbor and we are located outside of Columbus, Ohio. Welcome. Annie Quinlan. Yeah, hi, um, I'm Ann Quinlan. I'm the uh, new president for the Bannockburn Neighbors Assisting Neighbors Program in Bethesda, Maryland. Congratulations. Thanks. And last but not least, uh, Katie Brandon. Hi, this is Katie Brandon. I'm the executive director of Pasadena Village in very warm Southern California. Thank you. <laughs> well, I'm in uh, very rainy Asheville, North Carolina, in the middle of thunderstorms as I was last week as well. So if, uh, if I disappear, that's why. But uh, welcome, everybody. So what we're going to do is I've got a short PowerPoint presentation just to sort of go over the evolution of how we all got here. And different things that the grant can pay for. And because it's a small group, I think we can have a really good conversation at the end. At any time you want in the chat box, put some questions in there. I'll get to those at the end, just as you think of them, throw them down in there. And we can also um, unmute at the end to uh, get any questions answered that you might have. So. Okay, so 
basically just the evolution of how we got here. We applied, uh, well, welcome and introductions, grant initiative background, next steps, that's the agenda. So VTVN applied for um, ACL and NCLA, so the Administration for Community Living and the National, National Council on, uh, gave the National Council on Aging $50 million. Primary goal, period increasing vaccinations among older adults and people with disabilities. That is their main goal behind this. NCOA put out a competitive RFP for their initiative. 180 awards have been awarded under this. We received $150,000. Capitol Hill Village and Little Falls Village also received awards under this grant. What we are doing with our money at VTVN is uh, mainly these four things. We've hired a contractor, and this is this is really going to help you guys out. Is that whether or not you get this award or end up applying for this award, our contractor is putting together a communications plan and targeted marketing materials specifically for vaccinations among older adults, <clears throat> excuse me, and individuals with disabilities. So they are creating, you don't have to worry about creating a communications plan, an outreach plan, any of that. That's gonna be included in our vaccination event implementation guide that we're also putting together, which is going to be a step by step by step. Should you wanna put on a vaccination clinic, Here's the start to finish, the checklists, the charts, the everything that you may need, hopefully, to run a successful vaccination clinic. Part of what we're doing with the money as well is, of course, awarding um, up to, well, I'll get to that on the next slide, awarding villages money to hold their own events or education. And we're also going to be doing two promoted kickoff events um, that we will be figuring out as we go along. So, overview, we tried to keep this as simple as we could because the awards are just up to $2,000. We're hoping that um, you ask for exactly what you need. So it could be $500, it could be $1,200, it could be $2,000. So it's up to $2,000 per award. The vaccinations include, so if you're doing a vaccination clinic or education, it includes the COVID-19 booster that's coming out this fall and flu, but also shingles, pneumonia, and any vaccination provided, period. And if you do get one of these subgrants, um, you do need to attend one grant activity data reporting webinar that I'll be doing. And don't worry about the data collection too much. It's basically really standard demographics and numbers. And I will be here every step of the way to help you with that. So with the money, here are the three things. And this is what we can also do with the money. So this is what NCAA says you can do with the money. You don't have to have a vaccination event. I know some of the villages are smaller and may not have the capacity to run an event, but the three categories of things you can do are running a community vaccination event, you can do in-home vaccinations, or you can do general outreach and education. Um, I think for some of the smaller villages, I think that would be a really good thing to get a hold of because holding a clinic is big and involved. NCOA also wants to target certain populations, Black, Hispanic, Latino, LGBTQ, Asian Americans, and rural dwelling individuals. So again, with this money, the three things you could do are hold a community clinic, give in-home vaccinations, or put the money toward general outreach and education. So ideas around this, you can obviously hold a vaccination clinic. You can partner with other villages in your area um, to provide a, a vaccination clinic. If you provide transportation to another vaccination site, so let's say a village two counties over is having a clinic and you're not, but some of your members wanna go, if you provide transportation, we can count that as a vaccination given. So if um, if all you do is say, we want $400 to rent a van, and we're going to drive people back and forth all day, great. 
Um, NCOA is also, it's interesting, they uh, are interested in having you look for new community partners that you haven't worked with before. They actually count this as a number. It's not part of the vaccination numbers, but they would like to know, has this person or has this event partnered with somebody that they've never partnered with before? And it could be anybody. It could be any other social service organization. It could be a organization that helps individuals with intellectual and developmental disabilities. It can be a church. It can be your senior center. It can just be some other partner out there. And you don't have to partner with somebody new, but this might be an opportunity to be able to say, hey, we've got this money and we'd like to do a lunch and learn um, at your church. And we're going to use the money to create the posters and buy the lunch and, and you know, maybe pay uh, for those sorts of things. Um, you can use the money to print educational flyers to go in home delivered meals packages. So the, the kind of ideas that you're coming up with, they don't need to be just a vaccination clinic or just providing an in-home vaccine. Really try to think of things that you've been wanting to do or partners you've been wanting to connect with, haven't got there yet, but can maybe use this opportunity to say, hey, we've got this information and we'd like to do X with you. Brief overview of the data reporting. Again, don't worry about it. I'll be here the whole time to help you with the data reporting. It's basically non-identifying demographics. So male, female, age, age range, I think it is, age range, uh, county the person lives in. The numbers that NCOA wants to know is the number of vaccinations given. If you're not holding a vaccination event, perfectly fine, because they would like to know how many people attended your education event. So if you hold a seminar for um, the community and 78 people show up, those numbers count towards uh, what NCOA is looking for. We're also going to be counting if you refer somebody to another community service. So I know you get calls from members all the time that say, I need this help, I need that. If it's related to a vaccination and you say, hey, I think CVS down on the corner is doing some vaccinations and here's their phone number. That counts as a referral to a community service. They also would like to count, did you help with transportation or did you help with making an appointment? So if a person in your village calls up and says, hey, I need help making this appointment, it's all online, I don't know how to do it. If you help that person, that gets counted as well. But again, don't worry, I got you covered. Timeline proposals are due next week, next Friday. Again, we tried to make it really simple. The application page is a page, one page, and the worksheet that was included with the RFP is one page. Because we're, you know, it's not like we're giving out $50,000 per whatever, because the amount is so small, we just wanted to keep the application process sort of in line with. So when you're filling out the worksheet and you know, just a general overview of what you're going to be doing. Don't need big, long paragraphs on whatever. Just even if you bullet point and say, um, our village wants to hold a, um, you know, a, a, a lunch and learn at XYZ Church. We're thinking it's going to be September 15th. Um, we think we could probably get up to 75 people. Like just very basic, simple stuff. Um, we want to make this as easy and as non-difficult uh, as possible for you all. So proposals due next Friday. August 9th is when we're going to announce who got what. Uh, September is when the money is going to get paid out to you. And if you could have your project completed by December 31st, our grant period for what NCOA gave us goes until the end of March. So that's why we've got March 31st as the final reporting completed. If you get an award and you can't get your event done by December 31st, that's fine. We'll talk about it and we'll just get it figured out. So don't worry too much about that if you know something happens and it's not, it doesn't go as planned. That's it. Um, also need to mention that to apply, you need to be a member of Village to Village Network in good standing. 
And what else, Barbara? What did I miss? Anything? Um, no, I think I think you covered it pretty much. I mean, unfortunately, uh, we'd love to open it up to non B two B members, but that was in our grant um, proposal and application, and so it's very specific about that we have to have uh, V2B members. So cool. if you're not, you're welcome to join. Um, um, I guess questions. questions, I mean, yeah. Hmm. Jacqueline and then Hi. Murphy. <clears throat> Thank you. Um, I, I don't know, I, I just was on the previous seminar for just a minute. Did, did I hear somebody say that you can't use any of these funds for staffing? Correct. So what that means is mm -hmm. if you want $500 to cover paying for staff time running an event, we, we don't want the money to go to that. Um, we, we feel that there's other things that could be uh, much more, what's the word I'm looking for? We just don't want to pay for staff time because if it's something that you're going to be doing, it's something that you're going to be doing. And so if you ask for money to cover for staff time, it doesn't um, it doesn't quite get at what we're trying to do with this grant. The one other thing that you cannot pay for the, is vaccinations. And that comes right from NCOA and ACL. And they've been trying, NCOA has been trying to get with ACL to have that changed. And it is still cannot pay for vaccinations with this money. You can buy incentive gift cards, you can do all sorts of stuff, but you can't pay for a vaccination, unfortunately. But I don't know what that means. If somebody comes in and they don't have insurance, and if they, um, if the, the provider that you're getting for your vaccination clinic says this one vaccination is $80, the money from this grant cannot pay that $80 for that person to get that vaccination. Okay. So the one thing, Katie, I know Katie has a question, um, and I think you touched on it also, um, but those of you that are in Maryland, Pennsylvania, New Jersey, Virginia, um, anybody who's affiliated with Giant, Giant is having, you know, they're a partner in this, this whole thing and, and um, touch base with Little Falls. They, they have the contact information for the rep at Giant, but they're willing to come to you and do the clinics. Um, Giant is also the parent, the parent company is Stop and Shop. So the Northeast, you know, um, Massachusetts and whatnot. Um, Katie. Um, so we're still deciding what we want to do, but one of the ideas is to promote um, the flu vaccines um, at a at the hospital. So um, I'm hearing that we could ask for like a rental of a car and a driver to like drive people there, but we can't ask for time to coordinate volunteers to drive people to the clinic. Is that right? Because that'd be staff time. Correct. Okay, so you'd rather pay for like a rental car than for volunteers to do the driving? So volunteers doing driving is different than a staff member doing the driving. So if it's a volunteer doing the driving, you could purchase a gift card for that volunteer to thank them for their time. But staff of your village calling the volunteer and spending three hours working on pulling this together, those three hours of staff time cannot be reimbursed by this grant. What's the logic Thank behind that? Thank you. To be able to focus on, you, I mean, there's so little money that we're giving out that we're looking for innovative things that partner with people you haven't been with before and engage communities and people that you haven't engaged before. So, paying for staff time just didn't seem to fit into the, plus it's so little money. Um, we were looking for things that were more tangible and more um, not paying for staff time. Okay. Okay, thank you so much. You're welcome. Bruce and then Kathy. Um, 
if we had a volunteer nurse giving the shots, uh, that's covered, how would they get the vaccine? So part of the implementation guide is partnering with folks who can provide the vaccine for you. So it could be that CVS sends out or local pharmacies will send out uh, two pharmacists for the day of your event and bring all of the vaccinations with them. Part of the event is um, you know, getting people's Medicare cards and registration and stuff. So it pays that will cover the cost of the vaccination. So it's like holding the clinic instead of having a person go to the CVS. So mm -hmm. you're, you're definitely going to need to partner with somebody to provide the vaccinations and the vaccines. Nope. Yeah. And uh, when the uh, person getting the vaccination comes, they have to provide all their insurance information just like uh, they were going anyplace else. Correct. And the pharmacy will also have their paperwork that says we need this filled out and this filled out. So okay. that as part of the process and the pre-registration and setting appointments, that's something that can be done beforehand as well. Okay. So Annie had a question in the- uh, uh, I think Kathy. Kathy, was, Kathy was next. Kathy? Katie. Yeah. And then Katie and then- Okay. Oh, and we have somebody new. Great. Hi, Kendall. This is, this, I'm not sure how clear this is as a question. Okay. Um. Here in Rockville, we have six villages, some more advanced than others, uh -huh. within the city. Yeah. We already have our funding. So that's uh -huh. funding, it's not the issue. Okay. We're at the fledgling stage of forming what we want to do. So we will not be applying for funding through village to village. But two things that I'm hoping that we'll be able to network in with you all and get the help is the um, targeted marketing materials and plan and yep. two vaccination event implementation guide. I've never done this before. I have no clue how to do this. <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, I, I, I don't your other criteria necessarily are going to apply to our activity. I do like the idea that I just talked to someone in Rock, our um, Rockville facilitator for the city. Yeah. And we're going to hook up with two other villages. So excellent. We don't have excellent. isolated events. Plus, would be able to help some that are even younger chicklings than we are because our village is only two years old. So we're not all sophisticated with, you know, staff and stuff. Kathy, but, you're uh, a good example. You're, you're a part of the city of Rockville. So the city of Rockville will receive the information, not necessarily okay. you guys. You have not formed a spoke yet under V2V. All right, and so we, the info that would go to, go to Trish at the city of Rockville. I, I just emailed her, yes. Yeah, and because this is federal funding that is being, um, filtered on down. Technically, anything produced under this grant, whether we produce it, our contractor produces it, or you produce it, is technically public record. So the implementation guide can go to everybody. The um, communications plan can go to everybody. We're, we're sending it out to the entire network. Whether or not you hold a vaccination event or not, everybody's going to get the communication plan. Everybody's going to get the implementation right. guide. Okay, good. That's what we need. So we have Katie and then we have Bill. I'm losing track of who's yeah, who's next. Um, <laughs> okay, so um, yeah. we're we're considering partnering with a new group, but they um, they don't just serve seniors. And mm -hmm. would that you know if if we vaccinate younger people? Yeah, um, okay. Absolutely. That would be counted. Okay, thank yeah. you. Yes, the so, focus is older adults and persons with disabilities, but NCOA wants to know every single vaccination given to every single person, period. Bill? And yeah, for some, some folks okay. seem to have trouble with the idea that we can't, you know, this is an immunization process, but we can't pay for immunizations. But the, the government doesn't want to pay for the immunizations twice. There is a distribution system from the national level so local health departments and state health departments to get these vaccinations out to people. So the real trick is not just getting the, the vaccine, but getting them into somebody's arm. And that's where partnering with a drugstore or a grocery store chain that has pharmacies in it who can give the shots 
is extremely helpful. So that's the reason we're not paying for the vaccines because the vaccines will already be paid for by the people that you're gonna be partnering with. So Karen. We have a potential partner for a new organization in our area and they deal with homeless folks a lot. They provide soup kitchens and being able to reach out and get these folks vaccinated, it, even if it's nothing but flu vaccine, is something that we've been sort of discussing to see whether or not, and I'm glad we were having this discussion today because those may not be seniors, but they are certainly a disadvantaged population Absolutely. in our area. And so, Absolutely. Um, and I actually went in and got a COVID shot and to talk to the pharmacy, local pharmacy and to see if I could get them on board. So it was a sacrifice. Good. <laughs> to do research. You took one for the team. I took one for the team, yes. Um, so before, before we get to Bobby, there was one in the chat um, I was, from yep. I was just um, Annie. Uh, and you know, Annie, if I can answer that question, um, you know, the idea is to, it's not just whether or not you're affluent or low income or it is to reach out to those that are hesitant to get the vaccine, to get information out why they're doing it. Because even in an affluent community, we have people who are in a vax, so they're, you know, they, they don't want to do it. Or there's some marketing material that's going to come out from the Hannon group it's, that discusses, you know, those, those groups that are very hesitant and why they need to do it. Um, whether it's somebody who hasn't done it, but they want to do it now because they have grandchildren or, you know, there's, you know, and then you have other people in the community that are very under, you know, served and, and marginalized. And so, you know, it could be another faith-based denomination within your community that, you know, is, is a, an ethnic, you know, origin. So it's, it's to look at the outreach within your community. Okay. So, and did you all say, I, I guess the big thing too, um, and the important thing would be getting information out in, in terms of the, uh, the purpose of the vaccines, you know, and the usefulness of them. And is that something VTVN is going to be developing under the materials? Yes, absolutely. Uh, that, that you'll be sending out to the other. Okay, great. Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. Okay. Uh, did I think Casey had a question and then Karen again? Well, no, Bobby's Bobby's next. She yeah. has her hand up. My, oh, sorry about that, Bobby. That's okay. Thank you. So I've talked to our local health department about partnering with them, um, and they have several clinic ideas. Um, so, would, is it okay to ha host more more than one clinic, or is yeah. it designed for one only? <laughs> Do as many. Oh, yeah. Okay. All right. Thank you. Yeah, what we can provide is finite, but if you want to have 17 clinics, go for it. Okay, awesome. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I think it was Casey and then Karen. When will the uh, information packages, the implementation packages be available and distributed? Mid-August. Okay. Mid-August for the implementation guide. And then the first week of September for the communications and targeted marketing materials. Okay. Uh, is there any preview package that we might see ahead of time? Uh, what specifically are you looking for? Well, I, uh, I uh, one of our one of my board members is actually director of our city uh, health department, and we're collaborating on this together. So they've got a lot of collateral already in place. So, uh, you know, implementation of how to put it together and stuff uh, is one of the things. Uh, and as we're talking here, uh, more ideas of, of people for me to coordinate with locally. Uh, uh, it could be very easy to come up. Once I get the collateral package, it could come up. We could get quite a few people involved. We here. can ask. Um, Little, oh, Falls yeah, there's something has, Little Falls Village has put out an implementation, or not put it out, but I... Um, Little Falls Village has a six page implementation guide that they just threw together from when they were doing um, uh, uh, clinics. And so it's probably a start to take a look at. Yeah, if I can have something, I can, and I will be more than happy to share what Monica provides us. Sure. Uh, and I, I can send the Little Falls one to Barbara and she can get that out to everybody if you, or put it on our website or something. 
and because of my friendship with Monica and everything else, I know that the uh, uh, vaccines are all paid for and everything else. The thing is, is right. the technician, the technicians doing the shots. Would that be something we could get paid for or no? Is that so, considered yeah. the person so, that well, sticks the needle? So the person, the technician that puts the needle into the arm, can is, uh, is that cost something that we could put in for? Yes. So if it's paying the pharmacist to come out and do it? Not yeah. that, I'm just saying, not that I'm not going to be able to, but that's a nice carrot to offer. Yeah. Uh, I, I believe that's okay, Barbara. Um, uh, yeah. Especially, I think, so. I, think, I think so. Yeah. And I do know that, mo I mean, most places will not charge for that. Right, but I'm thinking, I'm thinking if we got a car going out and then we got a visiting yeah. nurse to go along with us. Yes. You know, that kind of yes. thing. Yes, absolutely. I'd rather not, pay, I'd rather not pay, you, want, you don't know how many gift cards are in the bottom of my pocketbook. <laughs> I do. That, that's a lousy payment system. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I, I had just had the question too about the timing of and availability of promotional materials because that would help figure out the timing as to when we would yeah. able, be able to get that information and then tailor something locally to yeah. try to plan when an event might occur. Yeah. Uh, so that, that you answered that question about the yeah. time. So thank we you. are doing our best to get this done in the fastest timeline we can. Um, so we will be sticking with those dates of <laughs> ASAP. I did hear, and Bill, you might know more about this. I did hear um, that the booster the COVID booster is going to be available at the end of September. Yeah, I think it's it's pretty close. It's either end of September or beginning of October. Okay. But and that's an updated an updated bivalent uh, bivalent uh, COVID shot. That's what I heard from the pharmacist yesterday. So that because yeah. the one I got was kind of the old one that I hadn't gotten but needed one. So anyhow, but I, that's what he said. And two, they haven't even yeah. gotten their flu shot. Uh, supplies yet because there that still has not been delivered. So that's that's usually delayed as well. So it'll exactly. probably be October before those come. Yeah, well. and so that helps with when we might do a clinic is to have the latest and greatest. All the you know yeah. this year's yeah. flu, this year's updated COVID, and so that helps with timing. So thanks. Hmm. Uh, Kathy again, and then Casey. Oh no, was that yeah. Okay. My understanding, I, I really am a little confused of what you're doing versus what we're doing locally, and that's something we'll resolve later amongst ourselves here. But I assume this, number one, this is a national program. Um, Which you know, is the, the whole thing, the, the, H, the whole funding through National Council of Aging. Yes. It's national. You, what you're offering is, is specific toward villages, but I'm sure there's a 9 million other outreach programs. The second question I have then would be, the, is the flu, or I'm sorry, the COVID shots include both the um, Pfizer and the, who's the other one who offers? Moderna. Moderna. Yeah, Moderna. Both, both versions? Any vaccination, COVID related, uh, as of right now, they just want to know numbers of vaccinations. So whether it's Pfizer, Moderna, flu shot, shingle shot, pneumonia shot, um, you know, Tdap, whatever, everything is counted. No, that's not my question. The question okay. is, what is available? So uh, is the high dose for the flu shot going to be available, or is that based upon the local pharmacy? I'm going to defer to Bill on that one. Yeah, it, it will depend on what the local pharmacy has. Usually for people over the age of 65, there is a tetravalent uh, special special immunization that, that's used. And again, that's usually controlled by a distribution process at the national level. So it will depend on you know, which county you're in and, and which state you're in in terms of the, the, the distribution process. But the pharmacy and the... And the um, Grocery stores that have pharmacies will have that uh, have th those those immunizations available, and it'll be one or the other, and they're interchangeable. One or the other. What? What? I think we're switching types of vaccination here in your conversation. 
Mm-hmm. Well, the, the, the Moderna and the Pfizer are basically the same. Okay, we're talking then COVID. And then right. if you're talking right. flu shot, that's flu shots, regular- again, it, the distribution will depend on what's available in your county. And usually for people over 65, there is a special high dose that's, that, that's given. So those should be available. But again, it, it will depend on the local distribution network. Okay, that's the bottom line. Okay. All right, thank you. Anything else? Well, I, I, I'm in, came in oh. late. I'm Kendall Matthews. I can do Silver Spring, Maryland, and my village is Greater Stonegate Village. Uh, I just, where are you? Greater Stonegate Village. Okay. Thank you. Uh, the vaccines or shots that you have is COVID, flu, shingle, Tdap, pneumonia. Are do you, are you doing RSV? Yes. That, yeah, they are. Yep. Forgot to mention that. Thank you. Yep. They want to count that as well. They count that. In- yeah. And those actually aren't out yet, so it will be it will be a while. Magic Johnson, I think, is already on TV pushing him. So there's they're expected to be okayed and and ready to go by uh, by September October. Okay. And that's a, a good a good reason to reach out to grandparents because it turns out that grandparents mm-hmm. can can carry the virus and infect kids, and kids are really devastated by this. So it's a good way to reach out to the older population and say, you know, protect your grandkids. Yeah. And then a lot of older people have gotten RSV also. Yep. Yeah. Right. Yeah. They, with some having commune, I mean immune compromise. Yeah. Yep. Casey. Yeah, just to, I wanted to interject uh, real quickly. Um, just before getting on to this webinar, I did a quick research. As far as the COVID vaccine, uh, I also heard it's going to be towards the end of September. The other thing I was noticing is that as typical is the big push is to get all the vaccines in before end of October. So I'm just that any kind of actual vaccine clinic, I would hope we could try to get them done before the end of October. Please mm-hmm. correct me if I'm wrong. I'm, I'm an architect. I'm not in the medical side of things. I'm just going to do it. But anyway, it's just uh, Throwing that out for food for thought. Yep, it's a very tight time frame for all of this, right. and so that's again, yeah, we're we're doing the best we can. Yeah, the education is is probably the key thing. Yeah, uh, Bruce had a question. <clears throat> Will you be able to send out all the uh, prior application forms you discussed to uh, everyone today? Yes, I believe Barbara can do that. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so, and he had another question to clarify the program is limited to providing vaccinations to elderly, disabled, and vulnerable communities. No, that's the focus. The focus is that is older adults, people with disabilities, disadvantaged communities. If you also happen to have other people, it, and that's the thing too about doing a vaccination clinic in your community it gets people to know who you are as a village because you can be like, hey, we're a village. You don't need to be a member to come, but here's all of our membership information and have you heard about us and this is what we do. So if you get um, you know, a 50-year-old person coming in to get a shot, perfectly fine. If the shots are available and you've got the time to do it, they, it's a focus on those populations, but not exclusive to. But now it wouldn't be it wouldn't be uh, vaccines that are normally given to children though, right? It wouldn't cover that. Uh, I mean, if that's the clinic that you're holding and there's kids there and the pharmacists are giving them shots, maybe I don't know. That hasn't come up. Hmm. I, a lot so of I think there's, there are some adults who haven't had measles shots or rubella shots, and those those I think would be would be covered yeah. because they are an immunization. So. Yeah, and a lot of it depends on the pharmacy that you partner with and what vaccinations they're going to bring. They could be like, we're not bringing Tdap or MMR because um, there's you know it, it it's 
muddying the waters. We're just going to do this, this, and this. So a lot of it will depend on the pharmacy. Okay. And what's Thanks. available, like Bill was saying. Cool. Y'all going to apply for this then? Um, I have a question. If we're considering applying for the U.S. Aging Grant, is does that disqualify us from getting this subgrant? No, no, nope. no. They um they can't give all that. They have U.S. That's Aging so has fifteen. <laughs> they have fifteen million left, and they are actually looking at target communities. Um, but you know, I don't know. I I know California is not one of them, but go for it, Katie. Um, yeah. and the application has to be by the 15th of August. Um, and um, they, um, I think we're going to try to do a, a webinar next week. I'm just coordinating because I'm just back from the U.S. Aging Conference like last night. So um, we're scrambling to try to get the information out um, that they want to give to our villages. So uh, we'll definitely do an e-blast. Okay. Well, if there's any further questions, um, my email address and phone number is in the RFP. You can obviously get in touch with Barbara. And um, as we go through the process, should you get an award, I will be helping you through every step of that as well. So um, you will not be on your own. Yeah. All right. Well, thanks everybody for showing up and your interest and Go for it and do good things. Mm -hmm. Thanks, Kim. Good Thank luck. You. Thank you. Thank you. Take care. Thank uh, you. Kim and Bill, can you stay on for one minute? Yep.